Hey everyone, welcome back to Kristen's Epic Adventures. Today's video is going to be a comparison between Volo's Guide to Monsters and Morton Kynan's Tome of Foes. So make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are posted. And if you found this content helpful, hit the like button and give us a thumbs up so that more friends can find us. Okay, so today's video is a comparison between Volo's Guide to Monsters and Morton Kynan's Tome of Foes. Now these are both supplemental books that are going to give you a lot more information um, about monsters, which are great for creating your own campaign or your own one shots or any kind of adventure that you want to make up and you just want to use something beyond what's in the Dungeon Master's Guide, Player's Handbook and the Monster Manual. Okay, there's some really interesting things in here though that even go as far as the role playing versus just monster stat blocks. So let's start off with Volo's Guide to Monsters. Now this book was published in November of 2016. So as of this video, it's actually already four years old. Um, there's a lot of really great information in here though. So chapter one of this book is all monster lore, which is really cool. Um, it took some of the most famous monsters from the Monster Manual and gave us a lot more background information about them so we can write a lot more lore and role-playing opportunities into our campaigns. It also includes a usable map of each creature's lair, which I thought was really cool. And you're going to find lore in Chapter 1 for Beholders, Giants, Gnolls, Goblinoids, Hags, Kobolds, Mind Flayers, Orcs, and Yuanti. Um, so that's, there's a lot of monster lore just in chapter one, a lot of background of the monster, where they came from, um, you know, things like that, that are going to be really helpful, especially with the layer maps of doing some really neat things in your campaigns. Now, chapter two of Volo's Guide actually has a bunch of new race options that are playable for you to make as characters. And there's a lot of really cool ones in there. You've got the Asimar, the Furbolg, Goliaths, Kenku, Lizard Folk, Tabaxi, and Triton. These are all playable races that Volo's Guide to Monsters introduced. Now, if you're a player and you want to try playing one of these races, make sure you check with your Dungeon Master to make sure they allow it. Um, there's some, some people like to just stick to certain races for their campaigns and their games, so you always want to check. A uh, great thing to bring to a session zero, but in case they say they they don't want that type of race in their in their game, I would maybe have a backup plan, maybe a few different ideas, or even just chat with them before a session zero to see if that's going to be something that they're going to allow in their campaign. My favorite of those is a tabaxi. That is a cat person, and I really, really, really want to play a tabaxi in some kind of game at some point. I think that sounds so neat. Okay, so that's all in chapter two. Now chapter three is where you get into your monsters. If I counted correctly, there are 127 different monster stat blocks in Volo's Guide to Monsters. And like I said, these are all new monsters in addition to what's in the monster manual and things. Um, I read through and skimmed through all 127 monster stat blocks. And I have to tell you, my favorite of all would be the flail snail. Now, a flail snail is actually a large elemental. So this is a large sized snail, and this is big. And just to tell you how big this is, their shell can be up to 250 pounds, okay? And it gives off kind of an iridescent sheen, it said, so it can kind of like reflect in all weird different colors. The cool thing about this flail snail, it has a lot of really cool attacks. Um, a flail snail actually has all these kind of little tentacles on their heads that they make attacks with, hence flail snail. Um, and also a lot of times when people or characters defeat them, you can take the, sh the shell possibly and people make them into magical shields, which I thought was really cool. Their, their shells can like absorb magic and throw magic back at you. So they do a lot of really cool attacks. So out of everything in Volo's Guide to Monster, the flail snail was my favorite. Now, after the monsters, there's three appendix. Uh, appendix A is assorted beasts, but it only has four beasts in it. Um, two of which are a cow and a dolphin, which I thought was kind of interesting, but it must be just beasts they wish they had put in the monster manual maybe, but didn't anyway. 
But Appendix B actually has 23 different NPC stat blocks, which is really handy. Um, there are NPC stat blocks in the Monster Manual, but this adds 23 more. Always cool if you're looking for NPCs for your game, but you don't want to create them on your own. There's a bunch more in here. And then Appendix C actually lists the monsters over again in a few different ways, which is really handy. The table of contents will list your monsters in alphabetical order, but when you go back to Appendix C, you get the list of monsters a few different ways. First of all, you get them by type, whether they are a humanoid, a beast, a fae, an undead, like, so if you're specifically looking for, hmm, I need a type of undead, you can go right to the listing of undead monsters that are in this book. The second listing is by environment, which is really cool, whether it's Arctic, coastal, forest, where you're most likely to find those monsters. So that's a neat thing if you're like, oh, I need some forest creatures. You can go back to the appendix, go to the forest section of the environment, and then they're actually in order by challenge rating back there as well. So that's a handy guide for um, finding some, without flipping through the whole book. Oh, that's not an undead. Oh, this one is. Oh, that one's not. You could just go right to the appendix, figure out where all the undead are. So that's Volo's Guide to Monsters. Now, Mortenkainen's Tome of Foes. Okay, obviously foes. We've got more monsters in here as well. But it also goes over some of the great conflicts in the D&D &D multiverse. That's one of the things that Morton Kynans adds. Instead of monster lore, it's more lore about some of the big famous wars that D&D has had in their world. So chapter one goes over the blood war um, that happened. Now this, things like that kind of happened back before I played Dungeons and Dragons, so I'm not super familiar with it, but if I wanted to be, I guess I could just read chapter one in uh, Tome of Foes. It, chapter one about the Blood War also has a lot of information on how to, if you like to create your own creatures uh, to put up against your characters, it has instructions on creating demons and creating devils and information about the nine layers of hell in chapter one. Now chapter two is all about elves, specifically the drow versus um, the elves of the material plane. And it has a lot of really good information about the Raven Queen. It also has some sub-races of elves that are playable that you can do if, if you want to play an elf but want something in addition to what the Player's Handbook and some of the other books have had. It adds the Aladrin, the Sea Elf, and the Shatterkai as sub-races of elves. Uh, chapter 3 is all about dwarves versus Dwegar. I hope I said that right. <laughs> um, and it has Dwegar in here as a playable race for characters, so that's neat. Chapter four is Gifts and the Endless War, and it adds the Gif as a playable race. And chapter five is all about halflings and gnomes, and it has the Deep Gnome as a playable race as well. Then you get on to your monsters. Chapter six um, is about 140 different monsters with stat blocks, okay? Um, which is really cool. And after, just like I did with Volos, with the Morton Kynans, I went, I kind of skimmed through all of them, looked at the pictures, looked at the stuff they could do. And my favorite of all of them that I found in here is a GIF. And a GIF is roughly a seven foot tall humanoid with a hippopotamus head. The pictures are so cute. In the, in the picture in here, he's actually in this like military uniform. And it says they are typically mercenaries with a love for explosives. Um, the stat block for a GIF says that he has like a musket attack, a pistol attack, and frag grenades that he can use once a day. And they have a love of kegs of gunpowder for payment for their uh, mercenary services. I thought that was really cool. I thought it actually would fit in really good with an Eberron type campaign, but one of these days I'm going to write something and I'm going to throw a GIF at one of my characters. <laughs> I thought that was really neat. Now, after that, it does have appendix just like Volos, where it has the lists. It has, you know, in the table of contents in the beginning, you can find all the creatures alphabetically. But when you get to those appendix in the back, you've got uh, all the foes by type and by challenge rating and by environment as well. So those are super easy to like cross-reference with the list in the back to find exactly what you're looking for so you're not flipping through the whole entire book. So that is my comparison of Guide to Monsters versus Tomafos. 
I want to hear what you guys think. Do you guys have both of these books? Do you have one or the other? Have you used them to put some of the creatures in them in your campaigns and what happened? I want to hear those stories down below. So make sure you put that down below in the comments. So that's it for today. We got some more great videos coming up for you real soon. So make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any. Hit that notification bell so you know when they're posted. And if you found this content helpful, please go ahead and hit that like button and give us a thumbs up so that more friends can find us. Thanks guys. Bye.